Hello everybody. Unseen scenario questions are hard, but this is the hardest of all. Now today we're gonna look into the unseen scenario question of June twenty twenty three, the second paper, and we'll solve it one by one. But again, uh, like all the other videos, I want you to be very patient with me, because to solve problem like that, it takes time for me to explain it. And this is not supposed to be watched like short form content. And without further ado, let's go into it. So, like other question, we'll first understand what the question is about. And this is always the method I use. They said, a two D array account contain account holder's name and password for a banking program. And to make this sentence visible, I created fake data for me to visualize it. Again, you don't need to do that in your exam. And a two D array. Account details has three columns containing the following details. Column one stores the balance. Column two stores the overdraft limit, meaning how many, how much money you can take out, um, in loan, something like that. Okay. Column three stores the withdrawal limit, how much money you can withdraw. Again, I have created a two day array, and that's how it should be displayed. And this is just indicator. It will not be in the two day list. But what is true is that in this 2D list, the first item in every list is the balance. Second item is the overdraft limit, withdrawal limit, and so on and so forth. Now, the next sentence here is important to understand. The amount of money in a bank account can be negative, meaning you borrow money from the bank, like this. But it cannot be more than the overdraft limit. And for example, they said an account with overdraft limit must have a balance that is greater than negative one hundred. And in my example here, I illustrate this by using the second example. Let's say Harrod. His overdraft limit is two hundred, so his balance must be greater than negative two hundred. So I put one negative one nine nine here as the limit. Of course, in banking terms, this means that this guy is actually owing the bank this amount of money. All right, we'll understand why this is important later when it comes to implementing the withdraw money feature. Suitable error message must be displayed if a withdrawal cannot take place. For example, if the overdraft limit or the size of withdrawal is exceeded, this is what we will tackle when we write the procedures here. The bank account ID gives the index of each account holder's data held in the two array. For example, account ID twenty, it means that the customer details are stored in index twenty of account and account detail. For example, I have three accounts here. So Elizabeth is in the third position of the list, which means that Elizabeth ID is implied to be three. And Elizabeth account details will also in be in position three. Again, reiterate all these values here are just random numbers. It's just for me to see how I want to implement. My algorithm, and the variable size contains the number of accounts. So in this case, I have three customers, so it should be three. But you don't need to declare this; just assume the size variable contain the number of accounts. So the ar array variable and size have already been set up. All this have been set up. You don't need to write it down. Our goal is to write the program that meets the following requirements. So that's the gist of it, and I will solve this one by one. And if you look into my right, I have written down some skeleton code for each procedure we need. I'll explain what each of these mean later. Now let's skip forward to the back. We we'll start from step one. We we'll check if the account ID exists. At this point, you might be asking, but how do I know if the ID exists? Look, the key term here is this paragraph here. ID twenty will be stored here in twenty. So if you give an invalid ID detail, it will be an ID that is greater than the amount of items in this. So for example, if I only have three accounts in my bank, then an ID of four will be invalid because it exceeds the value of size. Because there is no fourth person in my account, so that's how I will check if the ID exists. Now what I will do is that I will first output eight. Enter your ID, and then I'll just do input ID, and 
I will conduct a validation here to check if ID exists. First of all, ID should not be negative. So if ID, while well, ID is less than zero, or if ID is greater than size, because size contain the number of accounts I have. And I will do input ID again. So maybe I'll, I'll put a message just to clarify. I'll put your ID is invalid. Do again. All right, and with that, we have completed our validation. Like the previous two questions, this is how we do validation check in unseen scenario question. The next step, they will want us to check if name and password entered by the account holder match the name and password stored in account before taking any action. Now we have gotten the customer's IDs. So let's say the user entered two, meaning Herod. I would want to check if the name and password that they entered match those stored in the account. Now, this is what I'm going to do. I'll just first ask, I'll put enter your name and password. So later that, I'll just input name, input password. All right, that's it. And again, I'll do a validation check. While name is not equal to whatever that is stored in account, yeah, account ID. So this will give you, uh, wait, yeah, this one, sorry, ID one. So which means first the number of row, two, and then the first element of this list here is Harrod. So I'll check if name is equal to that, or like they're not equal, meaning password also not equal to whatever that is stored in account ID two. Then I'm gonna do, all right, um, output. Your details are incorrect. Enter again. So in this case, we will just ask them to enter again, regardless of whether uh, they got one or two error here. So I'm just gonna end one. And with that, we can proceed to the next action. So now, how I problem solve usually is that I'm, I'm gonna solve one bullet point after the other so that things seem less overwhelming. Now, the next one, display a menu showing the four actions available for the account holder to choose from. So let me do display a menu. How you can display a menu simply is just output. Output, I will explain how this will work later. One will be display menu balance. That's how, it's, think of it like we are creating a very simplified user interface. Output deposit money. And furthermore, so the fourth option will be exit. Now next up, what happened next is something uh, a little bit harder. So for each option that the user has key in, we will call, we'll first create a procedure that does each function. Procedure is basically functions in Python. They group together similar codes. Think of them like a module. So I will first show you how I write the skeletal code, and then I will go on to complete each procedure. So what happened now is that I'm just gonna do uh, ca a case of, all right, by the way, I still need to ask the user for an option, input option, and I'll do a case of option. And then for each uh, value that they could uh, possibly key in, so if they key in number one, I'm just gonna do call the display balance uh, procedure. Now, this is what the lo notation in A level, but uh, sometimes in the marketing scheme, they don't use the call keyword. I think that's fine too, as long as you know that you're calling a procedure. And I'll just go on to proceed to the next one. That's, that's how you actually call a procedure slash function. And four will be, there'll be no four for now. And four will be, uh, nothing for now. I'll put exiting 
I'll show you how to implement for later. All right, and otherwise, if they enter something other than that, we'll, I'll put hey invalid option, and then we'll do end case. Right, that's about it. The skeleton code. So for everything, I'm just gonna indent it, and I'll show you something very spe spe special. So if they entered the option four, I want to exceed it. So what I can do is to add a repeat until code repeat everything here until the option become is equal to 4. That's how I know whether to exceed the program or not. All right. So now we have called the function, but we haven't actually implement what each function sh procedure should do here. So now I have created the skeleton code. Let's go up. That's how you create procedure. So First one, procedure is to display balance. We need to implement this because they said allow each action to be chosen and completed. Each action is completed by a procedure with a parameter of the account ID. We start off with the procedure keyword and then the name of the procedure and that takes a parameter called ID. So what happened here is display balance. Basically, I need to show what, how much the guy or girl has so this fun f procedure is easy. You just output ACC details followed by the ID. And you know that balance is in the first element of every list. So ID dot one. And that's it. That's how you display the balance of the person. What is hard is the second one. Procedure withdraw money. Withdrawing money is a hard feature because we need to check whether they exceed first withdrawal limit or to check whether they exceed the, the cash available. So even if they didn't withdraw, exceed their withdrawal limit, it's possible that they will exceed what they have and in their overdraft. And then only we'll only let withdrawal happen, meaning deduct the balance if all the criteria are fulfilled. Now let's solve it one by one. So if the amount that they withdraw want to withdraw is higher. So first we'll output I'll put a message. How much do you want to withdraw? And then they just gonna input um withdrawal amount. I'll just create a variable called withdrawal amount. And what happened next is you want to check if withdrawal amount is greater than withdrawal limit. How do you know the withdrawal limit of the person? you see the account detail, ID, and the third value. So if withdrawal limit is greater than ACC details, so we use the ID to indicate, to find out which row the person is in, followed by third amount. If this happen, then we'll output a message saying, you have exceeded your withdrawal limit, meaning we don't allow them to withdraw their money. And we have an end if. That's it. First possible scenario. The second possible scenario is slightly harder. I want to check if they exceed what they have in their balance plus their overdraft limit. Uh, this requires a little bit of math. So um, I'm just going to create a new one just to illustrate this. Let's say this guy only has one, $1 and his overdraft is 10. Maximum amount of money he can borrow from the bank is 10. Okay? And therefore, we draw away, let's say, 200. Now, how, what is the p maximum amount of money that this guy can withdraw? So he only has $1, and maximum he can only borrow 10 bucks from the bank. So the amount he can withdraw the most would be what he has plus the maximum limit. So you want to check if withdrawal amount is greater than the balance plus the overdraft. And that's exactly what we want to do. So you would just cop, um, I'll just do a shortcut. If withdrawal limit is greater than ACC details, ID one, which is the balance that he has, plus the amount of money overdraft that he can borrow from the bank, maximum amount, ID two. And if that happened, then you have to print out another message. I'll put 
uh, you don't have that much catch. And then you just do an end if to end it. Alright, so that's the two possible criteria where they cannot withdraw any money. So if let's say the criteria fulfill, now how do we know if the criteria is fulfilled? So we need to check if withdrawal limit, first of all, it has to be smaller than uh, smaller than or equal to the balance. Uh, sorry, it sorry. It has to be smaller than or equal to the withdrawal limit. So this case here, and so not just that, uh, you also need to have enough cash in your account. So you, the withdrawal limit, to be very patient with me, the withdrawal amount, need to be less than what you add up just now. Meaning, it has to be less than your cash available plus what you can borrow from the bank. So that's the first condition, n not exceeding the withdrawal limit, less than or equal, and has to be less than what you have. And only if this criteria match, do not forget to minus off the balance, because otherwise the bank will lose money, right? If this criteria is fulfilled, then your account balance, ACC details, ID dash one, so that's the account balance, will be equal to the original value of the account balance minus the withdrawal amount. And with that, you have done it. And you, of course, you, you want to repeat this entire process, okay? You want to inc repeat this entire process until the user has key in a value that is valid. So what happened is that I'm gonna indent it. I'm just gonna put a repeat, repeat everything here until, until this condition match. So I'm just gonna copy the, cr the only criteria which the user can get money. And that's about it. We have implemented the withdrawal money feature. And next up, deposit money. That's an easy procedure to manage. Basically, whatever amount they key in, you just add it up to balance. Whew. So I'm just gonna do ACC details, ID, uh, balance is one, will be equal to the original value plus, all right, sorry, I forgot to ask the user, how much are you depositing? So you're just gonna input deposit amount. By the way, use meaningful n variable name because that will be awarded too. All right, that's about it for deposit money. And with that, we have completed all three procedures. Let me check if I've left out anything. I don't think so. You only need to declare local arrays and local variable that you use. So in this case here, uh, you can you you can write the declare code to declare the accounts and also the account details. You can just check out the marking scheme. But again, the idea of I think that's it for this uh, video. Um, so my answer will be a bit different from the marking scheme. Uh, but the point of this video is not to show you exactly the replica of the marking scheme because you can read it yourself. But to show you the problem solving process that I use to solve each question so that you can replicate the process in this question, in whatever thing, whatever question you do. And if you watch until this point, thank you so much for watching. I shall see you in the next video. Goodbye.